All right, so let's talk about the Takako. Takako is a fruit that is related to this guy here, which I talked about recently, the Chayote. It's in the same genus as this one, but uh, this one is much, much more popular than the Takako. The Takako is extremely rare, but it does have a lot of popularity here in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, this is one of like the traditional foods here, but it's kind of like falling out of fashion. I think it's something that maybe like an older generation likes, but um, I've been here for you know a few days now, and I haven't be been able to find this at like any markets except for like one vendor. One vendor had this, and they were selling like a lot of more obscure sort of things, like medicinal things and stuff like that. So I don't think this is like as common as it used to be, at least not in the area that I am right now. And like the chayote, this is used more as a vegetable. You can eat it raw, but typically it is cooked. And that makes sense because this, very, very hard. This is an extremely hard fruit. In fact, the name Takako is believed to derive from <laughs> I'm gonna try to pronounce this, and I'm gonna do it wrong, I apologize. Uh, tlaqua qua qua, tlaqua qua qua. And that means uh, to chew a lot. That's what that means. And, uh, <laughs> which makes sense, because if you were to try to eat this, you'd be chewing it for a while. Another fun fact that I learned about this is that there is a saying that if you're really nervous, you are sweating tacacos. Similar, like, how we have in the U.S. sweating bullets. Like, oh, you're sweating bullets. You'd be sweating tacacos. <laughs> and I would rather sweat a bullet than a tacaco because these things have, besides being pretty hard, they also have these little teeny thorns on them. They got these little spikes. Yeah, you don't want to be that nervous. Because of how hard it is and everything, I am going to cook it, but this is a documentation series and I do believe people do eat it raw sometimes, so let's cut it open and try it raw first. How to cut this is is the question. Um, I think the cool way would be to cut it this way to get a nice cross section, but the safe way, because it's raw, would be to cut it this way. And uh, I need my fingers for the rest of this fruit, so we'll try it this way. Ooh, yeah, it's extremely tough. Pierce it. Okay, once you get past the hard exterior, it's a little bit softer in the middle. And I've heard the seed is bitter, but I think it is edible. Just might not want to eat it. <laughs> Right, and I don't want to eat this outer bit. I have a feeling that it's not going to be fun. So I'm going to pick that off. <laughs> I'm going to cut that off. <laughs> I've heard that some people cut this up real fine, like they grate it and put it in salads and other raw dishes. I'm not sure how common that is, but it is something that I've read can be done. Also, let's pop that seed out of there. I'll review that separately. Uh, there we go, we got like a little O. It almost smells like, like a lime, like a macroot lime. Kind of like an intense floral citrusy smell. That and cucumbers. Weird, all right, but what does it taste like? It's not bad. But it's really complicated and really fibrous. <laughs> I have to spit that out. It does taste a little bit like the chayote, but not as much as I thought it would. It tastes more like the chayote seed, but it also has this additional flavor to it. Like on the tongue, it's like cucumbers, chestnut, uh, chayote, green beans. That's, you're, you're getting that, that on the tongue. But then something else kind of gets you in the back of the back of the nasal passage. That's like a little floral. It's also giving me uh, a, a sensation of like uh, like a dusty taste on the tip of my tongue. It's not dry mouth, but like like you just took a spoon of a flour or something like that sort of texture. Huh? 
it's not objectionable, it's just kind of odd. Uh, yeah, so that that's curious, and uh, I hear when you cook it, magical things happen. So, let's cook it. Got a pot of boiling water. I'm gonna put in a little bit of sea salt, and a handful of tacacos. And this, I hear, doesn't boil for that long, just 10 minutes, so let's see if that works. Oh yeah, I forgot about the seed. <laughs> so I've got a little piece of it here. Let's see just how bitter it is. Very. It's bitter in like a chemical kind of way, not even like good bitterness like you would get from like a citrus rind or from like chocolate or something. That is like very harsh bitterness. All right, so it's been uh, a little bit longer than 10 minutes. Honestly, I feel like 10 minutes is not long enough. Doesn't seem right, but um, so a generous 10 minutes have passed. And yeah, they're, they're floating to the surface. So maybe they're like ravioli. Let's, let's see if they're done. Okay, well, they're steaming and they've softened. So maybe they are done. So I'm not sure exactly how to peel this thing, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna kind of like chop off the end, maybe. Uh, it's a little too tough for that, but you know, it's splitting a little bit. Let's let's see if I can work with that. Yeah, there we go. It's not too bad. And next, let's get the seed out. It's got a interesting smell to it. It's good. It's kind of starchy tasting. A little bit like potato. A little bit like chestnut. A little bit like green beans. There's also this kind of like, get you in the nose sort of thing. Like a floral sort of something. I can see why this is popular, because it is kind of like this, and these are popular here, but they also have their own little unique flavor to it. I would dare say, I like the Takako better than the Chayote. Never thought I'd be saying that, guys, but it's true. But I'm not done with the Takako. I've got one more thing I wanna do, and that is try it with mayonnaise. This is probably the most popular way of eating this, is to put some mayonnaise inside that little cavity there and then eating it that way. This is very similar to how uh, peach palm is enjoyed here. They do the same thing. They take the seed out, fill it with mayonnaise. It worked for the peach palm. Let's see if it works for the Takako. Oh yeah. <laughs> And um, if you didn't see my peach palm episode, you should probably know that I'm not like the biggest fan of mayonnaise. I mean, it's all right, but you know, I know when the flavors go together. So I'll put my reservations about it aside. Okay. Yeah, it's good. It reminds me of eating like a deviled egg. You know, maybe there's even a little bit of like a sulfuric taste in there. It, it works. Those flavors do go well together. It's a little bit like potato salad in a way. It's got a little potatoey taste to it, but there's more to it than that. So I'm not the biggest fan of mayonnaise, but in this sort of application, it does work. Those flavors do go. Well, I think that's about it for the Takako. This is a really, really interesting one. I'm glad I got a chance to find it. It's maybe a little bit difficult to deal with. It's small, it's sharp, it's hard. You have to cook it. It's a little bit difficult to open. You might be sweating Takakos to deal with the Takako, but it's worth it. It's worth it. If you go through it, the process, it does taste really nice. So I'm really glad to get a chance to try such a uh, quintessential Costa Rican fruit here. And um, hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. 
Hey, before you click away, I'd like to give a big shout out to my mega patrons. That includes Smarter Every Day, Sean M. Glynn, and Lofty Rex. They are big supporters over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I can continue to keep this series going, so if you'd like to help support the channel, uh, take a look at the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way to support the channel is to buy a t-shirt. T-shirts are available also in the description below. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.